The purpose of London's Living Treasures is to honor those in our community who represent our best values. The program is an effort to strengthen London's historic preservation by recording the stories of those who have lived our history in an admirable way. This year, we honor Glenn Caleb's Sr. Billy Cheney. Jesse Lewis. And Paul Claiborne. Although each treasure is unique, they share important qualities that have served them well in good times and bad. In honoring them, we learn what it takes to become a treasure. If you've ever stopped by the London Laurel County Farmers Market during the summer, there's a good chance you've met Glenn Caleb's. The 90-year-old Laurel County native rarely misses a chance to go to the market and sell his homegrown vegetables and chat with friends. Glenn Caleb Sr. was born on January 17, 1925 to Elijah and Mary Caleb's in an old two-story colonial home on what is now Kentucky 229. Glenn has spent his entire life on that 400-acre plot of land where he grew up, raised a family, showed them how to live off the land, and most importantly, taught them about God. His dad and mother bought the two-story colonial-style house back in 1919. Glenn spent his entire youth on that farm until August 20th, 1943 when the 18-year-old was drafted into the U.S. Navy during World War II. After basic training, he went to Norfolk, Virginia. Glenn and his fellow sailors were waiting on a new ship to be commissioned, the USS Houston. They departed Norfolk on February 1, 1944, making stops in Pearl Harbor and later San Diego before ultimately making the journey to the Pacific Islands of Japan. On October 14, 1944, his ship was torpedoed by the Japanese, and they were forced to abandon ship during rough seas. The next day, survivors of the USS Houston were taken aboard another ship, which was again attacked. Glenn survived, along with numerous other crew members of the USS Houston. After returning to the U.S. for a brief leave, Glenn was reassigned to an aircraft carrier, the USS Lake Champlain. They had only been in the South Pacific for three days when President Truman ordered the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. Three days later, another bomb dropped, and six days later, the Japanese surrendered. By December 7, 1944, after 32 months of courageous and honorable military service, Glenn received his discharge papers and headed back to the family farm in London. He built a new house on the farm in 1949 and has lived there ever since. It wasn't long after returning home from the war that Glenn met the love of his life, Mary Bell Justice. They dated for about two and a half years before getting married and having three children, Linda, Glenn Jr., and Mike. Sadly, Mary Bell lost her battle to lung cancer in 2006 after 53 years of marriage. Together, they had three children, four grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. Even before he became a parent, grandparent, or even great-grandparent, Glenn has had a respect and love for God. Glenn was saved in the church that he still attends, Robinson Creek Baptist Church. He taught Sunday school and was a deacon there for more than 50 years. He still goes to church every Sunday, is an active Gideon and a strong believer in the Bible. Glenn is as active as can be expected for a 90 year old. He can do about 30 or 40 minutes of work before getting tired, but that doesn't keep him from walking around the farm and doing a few chores here and there. Aside from working in his garden, going to church, or relaxing in his favorite chair, one of Glenn's favorite activities is going to the local farmer's market, where he and his daughter Linda can often be found selling their homegrown produce. Glenn was humbled by his selection as a London living treasure. I felt honored and proud that I was chosen, he said. There's hundreds of men and women in Laurel County that are as qualified as I am, and they deserve it just as much as I do, probably more.
Billy Cheney isn't your average 83-year-old lady. In fact, it's fair to say this fine woman has never been accused of being average a day in her life. She is perhaps most recognized in Laurel County for her unapologetic fashion flair, attending a political dinner in patriotic garb, or hosting a Red Hat Society luncheon in an elaborate crimson hat and purple dress. But Miss Cheney is about much more than the clothes on her back and the hats in her closet. She was born February 17, 1932, to Ernest and Dorothy Minx. They lived with Billy's maternal grandparents in Ferriston, Kentucky, half a mile up the road from where Billy lives now. When Billy was seven, her father built the first roller skating rink in the area. Billy had learned to skate on the sidewalks of Corbin with one of her cousins and honed her skills when the rink opened. When Billy was ready to enter the eighth grade, her family moved back to Laurel County. She graduated from school in Lilly, or U of L, as Billy calls it, the University of Lilly. When Billy was 17, Glenn Cheney returned to London after completing a tour in the Army and lumber grading school in Memphis. She had met him at the roller rink when she was 12 and always had her eye on him. She had obviously made an impression on him too because upon his return, the two began dating. In 1950, Ernest got a job in Hamilton, Ohio, and Billy moved with her parents. Glenn would visit every two weeks. It wasn't long before the couple decided to elope. They were married on November 4, 1950 by a Justice of the Peace and went to honeymoon in Asheville, North Carolina. On November 5, 1951, one year and one day after their wedding, Billy gave birth to their first daughter, Kathy. 19 months later, Glenna was born, with daughter Cindy to follow three years after that. The importance of church and the Bible has played a significant role in Billy's life. For 19 years, she and Glenn attended Ferriston Christian Church, where she taught Sunday school three times a week, and Glenn was a deacon and an elder. Together, they helped the congregation raise funds to construct a new building. In 1969, they moved to Community Christian Church, which was then just an old two-story house. They quickly became intrinsic to that congregation as well. Glenn was chairman of the building committee, and Billy was right beside him, helping wherever she could. After their girls were grown, Billy was ready to start the next phase of her life. It was 1980, and she was ready for a new house. Eventually, Glenn complied, and Billy supervised the project, parking a chair in the yard and overseeing every tradesman who walked on the property. During that time, she became increasingly involved in community projects as well. From 1980 to 1984, she was the vice chairperson of the Laurel County Republican Party. She became involved with the Kentucky Federation of Women's Club, eventually serving as president, then as district governor. She served on the planning and zoning board. She also served as president of the Subinet College Theater Guild, working to get the stage remodeled. She oversaw the construction of three houses for Habitat for Humanity, and in 2002, she designed the Laurel County flag. She's also been named a Kentucky Colonel twice. In 2004, she helped establish the Laurel County Republican Women's Forum and has hosted political rallies for Larry Hopkins, David Williams, and Rand Paul. She hosts water aerobics at her pool three times a week, spends time with her family, is part of a dance club, and is queen mother in her Red Hat Society chapter. She is, in a word, tireless. I'm just an ordinary person, Billy says. I hope I can grow old graceful. At 107 years young, Jesse Mural Lewis lived through a time when travel from one county to another took days instead of minutes. Many travelers would camp along the trail as they headed toward their destination. At one time, Jesse Lewis was one of those travelers, leaving her native Leslie County to come to her parents' home in Laurel County in 1927. She lived in a time when electric and indoor plumbing were not available. Kerosene lamps were used for light, heat came from the fireplace, and the water source was a creek or a river. 
Most food was raised on a farm with small stores offering staples like sugar, salt, and eventually flour. She's seen many changes in the world over her lifetime and enjoys sharing her stories with friends and family. Born in Leslie County in the Cut Chin community on June 22, 1908, Jessie was one of 10 children born to Grant and Elizabeth Muncy Mural. The family was comprised of five girls and five boys. She grew up in a holler known as Devil's Jump Branch. They moved from Leslie County to Laurel County in 1926 so her father could begin farming. Jessie remained in Leslie County to continue her education, then came to spend the summers with her parents. She attended high school for two years, then went on to receive her teaching certification. She worked her way through school and also worked at Mary Breckenridge Hospital in Hyden, Kentucky. She rode horseback to school during her three years as a teacher, then came to Laurel County, marrying Winfrey Homer Lewis on June 14, 1930. She gave up teaching to stay home and help with the farm, and the couple was blessed with their only child, son Winfrey, in 1934. Homer was drafted into the Navy in December of 1943 during World War II, and Jesse was left behind to care for their son, the home, and the farm. She also took care of her mother-in-law, who was battling cancer, and soon after her death, her father-in-law became ill, and Jesse cared for him as well. After Homer returned home from his service in the Navy, he bought a two-story farmhouse, the site where Jesse still lives. It was only after the war ended that the Lewises got electricity in their home. She grew up with a brood of boys and described herself as a tomboy, playing basketball, riding stick horses, and fishing in the Middle Fork River in Leslie County. Later, she would spend her time socializing with other women in the community by stringing beans and making quilts. Exposure to that way of life inspired Jessie to continue the craft, and she describes herself as a good hand at quilting. When Homer Lewis returned from the military in October 1945, the family continued farming, using the natural resources to support themselves. As the years went on, Homer became ill and spent the last 25 years of his life in a nursing home. Jesse learned to drive, got a car, and never missed a day of going to give him his lunch. They were married for 65 years. Jessie Lewis remained active and independent, continuing to drive until she was nearly 90 years old and living at her home alone until she was 104 years old. After a bad fall, her granddaughter, Gregory, began staying with her, caring for her day in and day out. Jessie is a member of the Horse Creek Baptist Church in Clay County and loves to attend as often as she can. Paul Claiborne was born April 14, 1935, in Lafayette, Tennessee, the first child of Everett and Carrie Hall Claiborne. His parents were hardworking dairy and tobacco farmers who relied on their six children for help. Paul learned at a young age he liked to work. Working on the sprawling 125-acre farm meant tending to cattle, canning in the kitchen, slaughtering hogs, rendering lard, or working in the garden. They lived in a five-room house with a back porch and a big warm stove in the family room. When Paul was six, they got electricity, but they didn't get running water until Paul was in high school. By age 12, Paul could milk a cow all by himself. Every morning, Paul and his siblings would climb aboard the school bus and head to Valley View Elementary. Later, he attended Lafayette High School before landing at Berea College. He was accepted and started classes in the fall of 1953. He considered becoming a veterinarian before switching his major to agriculture. In the meantime, he joined the track and cross country teams and discovered he was a gifted runner. During the second semester of his freshman year, 
Kathy Harris walked in late to Paul's lit class and he took notice. They were both members of the Baptist Student Union and they started talking. Paul asked her on their first date and it wasn't long before he knew that she was the one. Paul and Kathy were campus bound, studying together and going to the campus movies on Saturday nights. All the while, Paul became increasingly involved on campus. He was captain of the track team, a leader in the agriculture union, and was in charge of a small dorm. Paul graduated in the spring of 1957, and days later, he and Kathy tied the knot. Later that summer, Paul got a job as an assistant county 4-H agent at the extension office in Rockcastle County. Paul excelled with 4-H, but the draft was in effect, so he joined the National Guard where he served for six years. Kathy worked as a home economics extension agent in Estill County, and Paul joined her to do 4-H work after his six months of active duty was completed. During their five-year stay in Estill County, they learned they were unable to have children on their own and began adoption paperwork for a little boy. It was a long and difficult process, but on December 18, 1962, Paul and Kathy were united with their baby, five-month-old Todd. Paul was accepted at the University of Maryland, and in September of 1964, the family moved to the Washington, D.C. area so he could study. Paul was able to complete a two-year degree in only 12 months. While in D.C., extension leaders from Kentucky asked Paul to move to the office in Laurel County. Paul was excited about the move, and his first order of business was developing the J.M. Feltner 4-H camp. When Todd was four, the Claiborne's added baby Tiffany to the fold, making the family complete. Kathy went to work as a teacher and played the piano at First Baptist Church on Sundays, where Paul was a deacon and involved in the church. By the 1970s, the 4-H camp had grown by leaps and bounds. It served 20 counties in the area, but was especially popular in Laurel County, with 250 to 300 local kids attending camp there every year. Paul also established a 4-H exchange program and continued to develop the 4-H program until 1980 when he turned in his 4-H badge and took over the extension agent for agriculture position. For the next 17 years, he worked with local farmers until retiring in 1997 after 40 years with the extension. His wife Kathy passed in 2011 after a brave fight with ovarian cancer. Paul is now actively involved with Rotary Club, helping to maintain the Children's Park on Dixie Street, as well as a new septic system project in Redbird, and he does it all with that quiet, hard work ethic he learned to love at such a young age.